So today I've got an interesting laptop. Inside the package, we've got a pretty large size peripheral box, some foam, and then the laptop. Let's go ahead and first tackle the accessory component here. This is your power brick, and of course it's gotta be fairly hefty considering the horsepower packed into this laptop. So there's a little lift tab, and this is a very unusual unboxing experience. It opens sort of on an angle, and then what happens next? This piece, that piece opens like that. Oh, and this is an indication of what to expect once you get inside the laptop. There's a little foreshadowing taking place. So also in the main package, we've got some paperwork. and a wrist rest as well. So it's cool to the touch. This is uh, some sort of a aluminum, maybe an alloy or possibly a magnesium type of material, but it is cool to the touch and you can see a couple of different grills for heat to escape on the bottom there as well. And if you look at the back side here, you can see some heat grills as well. Ooh. Obviously the standout feature here happens pretty immediately, you notice it. I mean, this is not your typical laptop. You lift it up and check that out. Secondary display lifts up to almost create a more seamless transition between the main display and the secondary one below there. Here we have our power input as well as a microphone input for a headset or external microphone. There's also an audio output. On the other side, we have two USB-A ports. And then of course, there's also that Thunderbolt port, which is also capable of USB type C if you're not using a Thunderbolt peripheral. The back of the device features a network port as well as another USB A and a full size HDMI out. It's kind of an interesting design idea there to put certain ports at the back that may be connected uh, more permanently and then put your other IO on the sides of the device. Look at this display. So this just lit up immediately. And I believe this is just some sort of a graphic for the time being, but it's a very sci-fi look to it especially when you pair the appearance to the upper display. Something I like here is that both of them have this matte finish, so they're gonna fight reflections. That's probably even more important on the secondary display down here. The keyboard now we know is not simply backlit, but also features RGB. And here you can get a better look as well at that light up number pad, which you can toggle on or off in the top corner there. I actually kind of like this implementation because I don't use the number pad that much. And when it's jammed into a keyboard, if the keyboard has to shrink to accommodate it, I would usually rather just have a larger keyboard to begin with. This screen pad, I should mention, is also touch capable. So if I click this little arrow here, certain functions start to pop, pop up to take advantage of the screen pad section. So I believe that this can also just function as a typical display where you can bring different items down into this section, whether it be a browser window or an application. This is the Game First 6 application. And within here, I can monitor network smoothness, CPU usage, upload speed, download speed. It comes to life inside of a secondary display where you don't have to constantly have it up. You can quickly glance down and see where your performance is being used and how much leftover CPU you might have. Let's load up a Lou Later video and see if we can do a little audio test here. It's tough out here in the content game in 2020. And it's especially tough if your name is Quibi, as far as I'm concerned, because that's a, I don't know, that name for me, it just does an immediate retrospective where Netflix just sounds. Oh, speakers appear to be underneath this secondary display. It actually makes for a decent experience because 
the sound ends up firing where your left and right ear uh, happen to be. This is the Zephyrus Duo GX550L. You can spec it out up to the Core i9-10980HK, which features an RTX 2080 Super 8 gigabyte GDDR6 VRAM, so lots of graphics performance baked in there. The model I have in front of me is 32 gigs at the moment. It has those two NVMe PCIe SSDs in a RAID configuration for two terabytes of total storage at RAID zero. This is a 15.6 inch non-glare UHD panel, 3840 by 2160. It's IPS and it features G-Sync. And the secondary display also has a surprising resolution, 3840 by 1100, and that happens to be a touchscreen too. The keyboard is backlit featuring RGB. It has two four watt speakers hidden under that secondary display. And the weight of this device, 2.4 kilograms or 5.29 pounds for a dual display laptop inside of one single package. I could see this being popular for game streamers, gamers, multitaskers, and even guys like Kirk who want to edit videos with a little bit more screen real estate on their lap.